Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I wanted to give you a skincare update. It's been about six months since I last did a skincare routine video and a lot of people have been asking me lately what's different, if anything, in my skincare routine. What am I loving? What am I not loving? What really works for anti-aging? So I'm here to explain all that to you today. If you've been with me for a while, you know that my skincare routine does not change that much from year to year, from season to season season, but it does change a little bit as I try new products and new things replace old things or some things just get weeded out. Um, so the way I came to skincare is that I didn't really do any skincare until I turned 50. I was a sun worshiper for my entire life and all of a sudden at 50 I was like, oh my goodness. I was really starting to see the wrinkles, the age spots, and I wanted to try to do something about it at home with skincare. But rather than just trying everything that the magazines were telling me to try. I did a deep dive and looked into ingredients that could actually help with anti-aging your skin. And what I found out is that there aren't that many ingredients that are actually proven to work. You know, especially these days, everyone's so into skincare and everyone needs a new story to tell. And so every couple of months, they tell you that there's a great new ingredient that is the next, you know, retinoid. It's the next vitamin C, it's the next whatever. And the problem with jumping on the next train, the next best thing train, is that it's all very, very unproven. You know, a lot of it is there was an experiment done in a Petri dish in a lab on skin cells and something happened, which shows that this ingredient might be promising for the future, but does that mean that it works in your skin now? Not really. Uh, a lot of things like Bacuchiol, which is supposed to be like the next big retinoid and the vitamin C derivative, I just don't bring them into my skincare routine because there is very little evidence that they actually work the way that the tried and true, the proven, the gold standard things do. So the things that are gold standard, they have like 20, 30 years of research showing that they work. This new stuff, it's like one study on cells in a Petri dish or one study on five women. So it's not really a huge body of evidence. So that's why I stick to kind of the basics where skincare routine is concerned. So let's get into the skin care routine. I have already washed my face and I already did a couple of my treatments. So I use a couple of gadgets and I want to talk about them because they are an integral part of my skincare routine. So when I first wake up in the morning, I use an LED red light face mask and I have them right over here. Let me show you these guys. Uh, these are the masks from Omnilux. So this is a slight change from the last time I did a skincare routine update. In that routine, I was using the Eco Face Mask. That was the first LED mask that I used and I loved what it did for my skin. I then started researching LED red light to see what was the best kind of mask, the right wavelengths, because you know, this stuff is terribly technical. You have to find out what is gonna actually work again because of the research. And what it led me to were the Omnilux masks. And so the main mask that I used is this guy. This is the face mask. I use this when I first wake up in the morning. I wake up. I'm not ready to get out of bed. This is a 10 minute treatment. I roll over, grab it off my bedside table, pop it on my face, and I do a 10 minute red light therapy treatment. Okay. So here's what it looks like when it's on. It's, now I'm very fortunate to be an influencer and Omnilux did send me all three of their masks. They have the face mask, then they have a neck and chest mask, which I love, and they also have a hand mitt. So I use all three in the morning. And as I said, this is before I even get out of bed. I just have my skincare on from the night before, but it's had eight hours or so to soak in. And so it is not really like on the surface of my skin anymore. It's been absorbed. It's done what it needs to do. It's not going to affect the face mask in any way. So I just pop it right on. It increases your skin's ability to produce more collagen and it has been shown in studies to increase collagen density. And I've really seen a huge difference in my skin with the face masks, especially with like the smoothness. My pores I feel like have been reduced. My neck wrinkles have definitely been reduced. So I love the face mask. You don't really need to do any special skincare with your mask. The only thing that they recommend is that if you are using a retinoid, that sometimes it can cause a little bit of irritation. So be aware of that. I continue to use my retinoid at night and then use my face mask in the morning. I haven't had any adverse reaction to it. That is the first thing that I do. I don't do that every day. I do that every other morning. And then on the mornings that I don't do my face mask, I use my new face. 
So this is the other gadget that I use in the morning. I've been using this for four years now. I love it. I feel like it gives me just like a mini little facelift. It is microcurrent. This guy is supposed to help with collagen production, but it's not really proven that it does. And this is more of a temporary treatment. So you just use a conducting gel and you just glide this over your face. And I think that it makes a big difference, especially with my hooded eyes. And I feel like it makes a little difference with my jaw. I feel like it makes my cheeks pop. So this is also like a 15 minute treatment and I do that in the morning. So those are my two gadgets. I am still using them. So after I finish with my new face, then I'll go in and wash my face. In the morning, I use the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gentle Cleanser. This is a non-detergent based cleanser. In the morning, you don't really need to do like a full scrub because presumably you've washed your face the night before. It's nice and clean and all you have to do is really kind of get off the skincare or any dust mites or any oils that your skin produced during the night. So this is a nice gentle cleanser. I use this. It doesn't strip my skin. It doesn't leave it feeling dry or tight. You don't really want that feeling. That is something that we learned to love back in like the 70s. Everything was about having your skin feel like tight. And now what we found out is that that's actually bad for your skin. Stripping your skin, it strips all your natural oils. That's not good. That contributes to your skin becoming overly dry. I have already washed my face just because I didn't want to, you know, go to the sink and be splashing water and stuff. And I did that like five minutes ago and my skin doesn't feel dry. It doesn't feel tight. It just feels nice. So I love this. The first product I apply after washing my face is my vitamin C serum. I use one of two vitamin C serums. It's either the Timeless 20% vitamin C plus E plus ferulic acid serum, or it's May Love the Glow Maker Antioxidant Serum. These are both fantastic vitamin C serums. I mentioned in the intro that I don't use any of the vitamin C derivatives. So the vitamin C that you're looking for is L-ascorbic acid or ascorbic acid. If it doesn't have ascorbic acid or L-ascorbic acid, I wouldn't waste my money on it because they're very unproven. What you're using vitamin C serum for is for the antioxidant power. And what antioxidants do is they fight free radicals that are generated in your skin and they go around breaking down your collagen, breaking down your the DNA structure of your skin. And so you want to fight that. And that's what antioxidants do. There are lots of different antioxidants and I use a lot of different antioxidants in my skincare, but one of the most potent ones is vitamin C in the form of L-ascorbic acid. Another potent antioxidant is vitamin E, which these both have in them. And then there's also ferulic acid, another antioxidant. So these guys have three antioxidants in them. So they really help your skin fight those free radicals. So I apply my vitamin C serum first in the morning. This one's actually empty. I need to order another timeless. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the May Love today. Um, this one is getting a little bit on the yellow side. So I really do need to get some new vitamin C serum. So let me just show you what this looks like. All right, so you can see that that's like slightly yellow. So vitamin C, should be nice and clear when you get it. It does degrade over time with sunlight and exposure to air. And so it turns yellow. When it's slightly yellow, it's still like 80 to 90% effective. And so you can still use it and it will be good. But once it turns like a dark orange or a dark brown, then it's gonna be pretty much ineffective and you shouldn't use it. So there's definitely like a time limit with your L-ascorbic acid based vitamin C serum. You know, you can use it pretty much for three to five months before it gets really dark and that's fine. So as you saw, I put it on my face, I put it on my chest. I used to put it on my neck, but now my neck has become so sensitive that I can't put any of my acids there. But I also put everything on the backs of my hands on my chest. Most things I'll put on my neck. You notice I put it on my upper lip. This is a, such a forgotten spot if you're doing anti-aging skincare because you know, you go like this, you rub it around. Oh my gosh, you've just glossed over this upper lip. And where do we see a lot of wrinkles as we get older? Right there on the upper lip. So don't neglect the upper lip. Make sure that you take a finger with, you know, whatever serum you're putting it on and make sure that you rub it on that upper lip. Try to avoid getting it actually on your lip skin because the lips are just extra absorbent and so they can be extra sensitive to ingredients, especially acids and things like that where um, they can cause some irritation in the skin. So vitamin C 
is definitely one of the ingredients that works for anti-aging. And if you use it, you'll see a brightening in your skin. You'll see a reduction in dark discolorations and age spots. It'll also help in reducing fine lines and wrinkles. And it's doing great things inside your skin as well. So the difference between these is that the Timeless is 20% L-ascorbic acid. The Maylove is 15% L-ascorbic acid. They both have hyaluronic acid. They're very lightweight and watery and fluid, and that's how they should be. These are both about the same price point, about $25 or $35. On the Timeless, I have a discount code for first-time Timeless users for $5 off. It'll be in the info box below the video. All right, second step is my Ordinary 10% Lactic Plus HA 2% serum. This is another watery serum. This guy is clear. You don't really have to worry about lactic acid deteriorating with light and air. So I just take a few drops of that and I spread it around on my face the same way I did with the vitamin C serum. And I don't wait in between steps. I just rapid fire everything on and uh, they will absorb. Your skin is slightly more absorbent when it's slightly damp. So I just wash my face blot it off, and then start rapid firing my skincare. Now, this is gonna take a little bit longer because I'm talking about each thing as I'm putting it on and telling you why you might wanna use it and why it is very effective anti-aging skincare. Normally, if my neck wasn't irritated, I would put this down my neck as well, but I'm gonna skip my neck, just put it on my chest, and the backs of my hands. Lactic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid. Alpha hydroxy acids are chemical exfoliants and what they do is they loosen up the glue that holds dead skin onto the surface. Part of our skin's protective barrier is that we have a layer of dead skin cells on the surface. But as we get older, the time frame that it takes them to pop off gets longer and longer and longer. And so the layer becomes thicker and thicker and thicker and drier and drier and drier and more crusty looking. And that's why you don't have that lip from within glow and that clarity to your skin. So that's where alpha hydroxy acids come in. Now there are different alpha hydroxy acids. Glycolic acid is a good one to use. I personally have never been able to use it because it's too irritating for my skin. I have normal to combo and a little bit sensitive skin. So I use this lactic acid, which is a little bit less irritating than glycolic acid. I started using the 5% version of this. So if you have sensitive skin or if you're just starting out using a bunch of acids, you know, don't jump in right away putting on five acids and hope that your skin is going to do okay. You kind of need to ease in slowly with them. I would only introduce one at a time. Give it a couple weeks, see how your skin does with it. Only use it once a week to start or twice a week to start and then bring in more acids slowly over time. The thing is that anti-aging is a marathon. It is not a sprint. It is going to take time to see the changes in your skin. Then I put on another serum. This is another antioxidant, much like vitamin C. It fights those free radicals, but this one also gives your skin energy so that your skin cells can do more. They can turn over faster. They can create more collagen and elastin, and that's what you want your skin to do. So so this one is also from Timeless. This is their Coenzyme Q10 serum. And this serum is supposed to be yellow, so no worries about this one. It's also a little bit milky in texture. So it's thicker than the vitamin C th serum, thicker than the lactic acid. I take about six or seven drops of that. And this one, I do include my neck because this is not an acid. This one will be mild and gentle and hydrating. But all my serums will begin to hydrate my skin because they all contain glycerin and hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid and glycerin are both humectants. They attract water. They're water binding molecules and they are in everything that I've applied so far. So those are great things to have. So you're already starting to moisturize your skin before you even put on a moisturizer. So I just got out a little bit more of that so I could do the backs of my hands and my chest. All right, so those were my three treatment serums that I put on. Then I go in with a lightweight daytime moisturizer. The one I use is CeraVe PM. I've been using this for years and years and years. This is one of the very first products that I discovered that I loved for its ingredients. So when I was doing my research, the same ingredients kept popping up over and over and over again in the research. And I was like, my gosh, it's obvious which ones you should use. Those ingredients were vitamin C, L-ascorbic acid, CoQ10, alpha hydroxy acids, niacinamide, ceramides, and hyaluronic acid. And this lotion is so fantastic because it has all three. 
It also contains glycerin, which is kind of the unsung hero of skincare. It's actually better at being a humectant and water binding than hyaluronic acid is. But then the other thing that this includes is niacinamide, which is another antioxidant. And niacinamide has such a great track record of being a great anti-aging ingredient. So it fights the free radicals in your skin. It's also moisturizing. It also helps to reduce the look of fine lines and wrinkles. It helps to brighten your skin. It helps to reduce dark spots. I mean, it is just another workhorse of anti-aging skincare. And then the other ingredient that this has is ceramides. Now ceramides kept popping up in the literature. So what ceramides are, are fatty lipids that are naturally occurring in our skin. Ceramides are what most of our skin's fatty layer is made out of. As we age, our body produces less and less ceramides. And the research has shown that you can actually supplement them from the outside in by rubbing them on your face. And so this is one of the only like affordable moisturizers that has ceramides in it, but it also has niacinamide and hyaluronic acid and glycerin. So this is such a bang for your buck, such a powerhouse moisturizer. This was reformulated recently. This is the new formulation. So they took out the parabens, but there's not much else in here that has changed. It still has all the things that I just mentioned. They did change the labeling to read ultra lightweight. So I think it is a little bit lighter weight than it used to be. I've looked for dupes for this over the years, and there really isn't anything that is a hugely successful dupe for this because of how much of each ingredient is in here. So the ingredients are listed by order of how much is in there from most to least. And niacinamide is fourth on the ingredient list. So there's a lot of niacinamide in here. And then the ceramides are also fairly high as well. I mean, you don't really need a lot of ceramides. It's usually around 2% to have them make a difference. And so they're in here in a good quantity. I just love this cream and at you know, $15 price point, you can't really go wrong with it. Since it's summer, I have been self tanning. I never let my face out in the sun. I spent enough time damaging my face with the sun and causing all this aging that I really don't incur any sun damage or as little as I possibly can. I use a high SPF sunscreen every day. I wear a hat when I'm out in the sun. I seek the shade. I use the Kula Sunless Tan Anti-Aging Face Serum. I put this on last night. I find that uh, it's kind of a gradual tanner. So if I put it on two nights in a row, I will get a nice you know, summery glow from it. This is one night's worth. I'll usually put it on after I put on most of my skincare routine, but uh, before my moisturizer, okay? And then uh, the product that I use on my body is the Loving Tan Deluxe Bronzing Mousse. And I use the San Tropez Mitt to put it on. So I did tan up my body yesterday. So I'm nice and tan. Wearing sunscreen consistently every single day from morning to night, winter, summer, rain or shine is a very important part in your anti-aging skincare routine. I use all mineral sunscreen. I used to use a chemical sunscreen. The chemical sunscreens are nice because they're lightweight, they're easy to wear, they don't cause a white cast, but on my sensitive skin, using all the anti-aging stuff that I do, it was causing a lot of irritation. I did a video recently featuring all my favorite sunscreens, both chemical and mineral, and I can link that for you guys right up here. And I'll also link it in the info box below the video. But for today, I'm gonna to show you my go-to summer mineral sunscreen combo that I'm wearing right now, which is the Elta MD UV Elements SPF 44. And I mix that with the Australian Gold Botanical Tinted SPF 50. I do four pumps of this, and then I just add a little bit of the Australian Gold to darken up the color and to take down the shine. The Elta MD leaves like a glowy finish, which is a little too shiny for me. The Australian Gold has more of a matte finish and it's a little bit thicker. The Australian Gold sunscreen can be a little bit drying, but the Elta MD sunscreen is very hydrating. I just mix them together right in my fingers, but I don't smear it all over my palm. I just keep it right here localized on my fingers because I want the sunscreen to end up on my face. I don't want it all to go down the drain. This is a lot of sunscreen, but Sunscreen is dose dependent, as it turns out. So you need to put on the same amount that they use to test it to get the SPF on the label. Generally, it's somewhere between a quarter teaspoon and a half a teaspoon of sunscreen for your face and neck. So I do use quite a bit, but I love these two mixed together. And since they're tinted, this is pretty much the makeup that I've been wearing all summer long. I just put this on 
and then I don't need to wear foundation. It evens out my skin tone. It disguises some of the, you know, red and blue discolorations under my eyes. Always make sure that you get it on your ears, under your eyes, on your eyebrows, up into your hairline. Make sure that you put it down your neck. You also need to sunscreen your chest, the backs of your hands, everything that's gonna be exposed to the sun that day, you need to sunscreen that up. So <laughs> protect your skin. Do you need to apply your sunscreen every two hours if you're gonna be inside all day? The recommendations on the label are for continuous sun exposure. So if you are out in the bright sun, you should definitely reapply every two hours. If you're in, the, in your house, it's not like there's no light in there. There's still gonna be some light in your house, so you still need to protect your skin. So let's say you're sitting in a room with a shade shot and you're not really getting any, any exposure, then you don't need to count that time. If you're driving somewhere and you have your moonroof open, then you're getting sun exposure. You have to count that time into the two hours. If you're then gonna go out and go to your kid's soccer game and be standing at the field, wear a hat you know, bring something with you or use a powder sunscreen and do a touch up before you go or use makeup with sunscreen in it and do a touch up before you go. So it's really gonna depend. I can't say that there's an absolute on that because it is a formula based on time and how they test it. But you know, in general, yes, definitely top it up if you're going back out in the sun. And I might as well mention my body sunscreen because everyone asks in this video what I use. I use Banana Boat Light as Air SPF 50. This is the best sunscreen I have ever used. I've tried lots and lots and lots of different body sunscreens. This one just doesn't feel greasy. It feels so like skin on your skin. It doesn't leave you sticky. It doesn't make you hot. It just doesn't even feel like you're wearing anything. It literally is light as air, so I love it. So that's my entire morning skincare routine. So if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody, bye-bye.